everyone and welcome. I'm Colette and I'm here today from Which Ways and I want to share something just a little bit different than what I usually do. Today I'm going to tell the story of Thomas the Rhymer, which is a true fairy tale about an actual human being. I'm doing this today more like a story or a podcast, so feel free to put in your earbuds, relax, and dream. One of the things I really love about this story is that it illustrates the intricacies of working with the other world and supernatural beings, and that we may not, in fact, fully understand the consequences of that interaction. I hope you enjoy. Thomas of Ursuldon, or Erlston, was born circa 1220 on the site of the Learmont Towers in Scotland, near the Ilden Hills. He lived near Huntley Burn, which was a grove of hardwood trees and small falls that was sacred to the Fae. And Thomas grew up a privileged young man. He could do as he pleased. He had leisure to do whatever he wanted. He didn't have to occupy himself with work. And on top of that, he was incredibly good looking and he had the gift of the gilded tongue, which means he could charm the birds off the trees. As he grew older, this lifestyle began to wane for him and he found himself more and more often bored and feeling like there was no point in life. One day when he was out hunting, he decided to go to the Huntley Burn and lay next to the waterfall and listen to the sound of its song. And as he lay there on his back, listening to the enchanted song of the falls, he thought to himself, if only I could sing with the power of that water, that would be something to strive for. And as he drifted, looking at the clouds floating above his head, in the distance, he heard a song, and then he heard the chiming of silver bells, followed by the galloping of horses' hoofs. At first he paid no attention, hoping whoever it was would just pass him by, but the sound became nearer, and he became curious. And so he roused himself from his doze, sat up and stretched, and decided to see who it was. And so he stood up and over the hilltop, seeming to float, came a beautiful white horse with silver bells tied to its mane and tail and a million tiny braids. And atop that horse was a woman, the most beautiful he had ever seen in his life, singing a beautiful chant. Her clothes seemed transparent and to cloak an inner light. And she seemed to float down the hill towards him. And she pulled up her horse and looked at Thomas with a deep and considering gaze. Now Thomas was well used to working with women and charming them and bringing them over to his side. So he did what he always did. He put on his most handsome, charming face. He whipped his hat off his head and he bowed low to the ground. He said, oh, hail to thee, mighty queen of heaven, for thy peer on earth there never could be. And she just tilted her head and looked at him, seeming slightly puzzled. And Thomas was a little taken aback because usually at this point, women kind of fell down on the ground. We're like, you're so awesome. Nobody's ever talked to me like that before. Usually people just want me to go shovel shit in the barn or something. She just looked at him, which was an unusual and unique experience for Thomas. And he was kind of taken aback by this. And so 
he thought to himself, maybe she didn't hear me. I'll try again. And so he took a deep breath. He said, oh, hail to thee. And she interrupted him and cut him off. And she said, I heard you the first time, Thomas. And oh no, I am not the queen of heaven. I am the queen of fair Elfland, and I have come hither today for thee. At this, Thomas was a little stunned and taken aback, and he didn't quite know how to respond. While he sat silent, the queen leaned down and she said, Do you want to learn to harp and sing? If you want to, come along with me. And as a token of your loyalty, give me a kiss that I may be sure of you. And he said to himself, well, I'm not afraid to kiss some maiden. That's not such a daunting task to do in order to learn how to sing beautifully like she does. So as she bent down, he reached up and kissed her on the lips. And at that moment, he belonged to her. She pulled him up behind her on the horse and sped off faster than the wind. She said to him, you're going with me now, Thomas. You will go with me for seven years. And during that time, you must serve me no matter what else fate brings to you or chances bring to you and they flew off into the distance. And they rode on and on and further into the distance, going swifter than the wind. And eventually they reached a wide desert where the green living lands were left behind. As they reached the sand, the queen said to Thomas, you may rest now. Get down off the horse and rest just a little space, and I will show you three miracles. Thomas more or less just kind of fell off the horse and collapsed onto the sand. And as he sat, the queen took his head, placed it in her lap, stroked his hair, and directed him to look into the distance. And as she pointed, it seemed that a veil was lifted and he could see three roads. And she said to him, do you see that narrow little road that's all thorny and briery and steep and hard? That's the road of righteousness. And some humans think that this is a good way to go, but it's a hard and rigid road. And truly, few humans really care to inquire or do the work to live righteously. Now turn your eye to this other road, this broad, broad road that lies across the meadow strewn with flowers. And humans call that the path of wickedness, although I don't really understand why. Others call it road to heaven. Now Thomas, focus closely and listen. There is a third road. This is the road to fair elf land where you and I will go together this night. But Thomas, you must hold your tongue. Whatever you see or hear in fairyland, if you speak even once, Without permission, you'll never get back home to your own country. And Thomas already felt like he was struck dumb and could not speak a word. She pulled him back up on the horse and off they rode again into the distance. On and on and further on. They waded through rivers deeper than their knees that came up almost to their waist on the horses. And they saw neither sun nor moon in the sky, but in the distance, there was the sound of the sea calling like an enchanted siren. 
And as they went on, it got darker and darker until eventually it was pitch dark night and they crossed the river of blood. And the queen told him that this was the river of blood that was all the blood that was shed on earth by human battles and warfare. And it was also the line of human ancestry and DNA that he was passing out of into another land entirely. As they went further on, Thomas began to be tired, but just when he felt that he would fall off the horse, they came to a lovely green garden. She reached up, pulled an apple from a tree, and said, take this for thy wages, true Thomas. I will give thee the tongue that can never lie. At this, Thomas started to be a little concerned, and he said, my tongue's my own fair lady. I could never bargain or barter or even find a bride or flirt with maidens or flirt with anybody. If I can't tell a small lie, how dare you curse me with the tongue that cannot lie? And she said, you have already chosen, Thomas. You kissed me. You are bound to your fate. You wish to be given bardship. This is the way you will achieve it. Now we will enter Elfland. And so it was that Thomas entered Elfland. They gave him a cloak of elven green velvet and a pair of shoes of velvet green. And for seven years, he was never seen on earth. At the end of seven years, he was gifted with a harp and told his apprenticeship was completed. And he left Fairy with much regret and some eagerness to see his own home again. He returned to Learmont Towers, where there was great rejoicing to see him. He never spoke of what happened in Fairy, but however, he did return, in fact, with the tongue that could not lie, with the gift of prophecy. And despite his misgivings about having the tongue that cannot lie, he did marry and had a son. He spent many years going around to villages and sharing with them prophecies and information. He spoke to them of foretellings that would help them and he aged as all mortal men must. One autumn, many years later, around the year 1247, he was with a number of his friends and clan leaders at a gathering at the tower for a feast. After everyone retired to their tents after a late night, Lord Douglas lay awake and he heard light footsteps. Wondering who was still up at this time of night, he got up and he saw a silver white stag and hind pass by his tent and head towards the falls and the Ilden Hill trees, and it waited at the edge of the trees looking back. Clearly this was a powerful omen, and so he thought he should go to Thomas and see what Thomas could say about it. So he went to Thomas and said, there's a white stag and hind at the edge of the forest and they won't leave. They just keep looking back at the camp. And Thomas right away sprang out of his bed, ran down to the forest and reached out to the stag and the hind. And as he did that, out of the forest came a procession of fairy folk arrayed in beauty and glamour and glorious clothes to honor him. And with them they carried a buyer covered with velvet cloth and a comfortable bed inside. And tears welled up inside of Thomas. And he said, you came back to me to say goodbye. I thought you would have long forgotten me. And the fairy queen said to him, Thomas, we do not forget those we treasure, nor do we lightly cast them aside. Once again, I have come for you. And if you choose, you can come with us and live in Elfland and have eternal life amongst us 
until you wish to be done with your body. And Thomas said, but I am old now. What pleasure could you find with me? And she said, I see the heart, the heart that sees beyond what humans look at on the surface and sees the treasure that you are. And she held out her hand and helped him up into the buyer and he disappeared and was never seen on earth again. And that is how we came to have a human ancestor in fairy. His words were treasured and passed down. And in the 1400s, his prophecies, as they were remembered, were written down. They currently reside at the library in Oxford. And the grove where Thomas first met the Fairy Queen now has new trees. However, Learmont Tower is no more. But the trees survive and regenerate. And that is the story. Thomas the Rhymer. Stay safe and be well.